All right, last video for this section where we're dealing with log equations, which I guess will end up being the last lecture video for this whole chapter. So the last lecture video that you'll see on logs for this entire class. I'm gonna call these advanced equations as opposed to the basic equations that we did in the previous video. Although I think what you'll see is the work we did in the previous video is at least as hard as anything we're gonna do in this video. I purposefully took some fairly straightforward questions in the last video and did them in straightforward ways and then also in much more advanced ways so that when we encounter problems like the ones we see here, we'll be able to handle those. I'm gonna do that same thing that I did in the last video that's probably somewhat annoying where I solve things more than one way the goal being to give you the skills that you need to solve not only these equations that you see, but anything that you might see on a test or a quiz or on the homework. Without further ado, this first question, eight times four to the three X minus four power equals eight to the X plus one power. As is often the case, there's lots of different ways you can solve this. I'll start by showing you the way that I would solve this. What I would do with this problem is think, all right, I see these X's up in the exponent. I'm gonna have to introduce logs for sure but what should be the base on the log that I introduce? It'll turn out it doesn't matter. You can use any base you want and get the right answer. However, certain choices for your base will make things work out nicer. You're like, oh, I bet it should be four to cancel out this four. Well, that would work out nicely if you took log base four of both sides for this, but it won't work out as nicely as this. And you're like, oh, okay, fine, log base eight, huh? That'll work out really well here and also on this eight. Yeah, but it won't work out quite as nicely for this four. If only there was some base that would work out nicely for both of them, I think there is. Since four is two squared and eight is two cubed, what I would do is I would take the log base two of both sides of this equation. Again, if you wouldn't have thought to do that, it's okay, there's other ways you can solve this, but let me finish through with this example. What we wanna do now is use a couple of log rules. We can take this x plus one down in front of this log using the third log rule, and this three x minus four, you might be thinking, oh, let's bring that down in front with a third log rule as well. You can't do that because this entire thing is not to the three x minus four power, only the four is. We have to first use our first log rule to break this up into two different logs before we can use the third log rule on the left-hand side. So maybe I'll first just use the first log rule, and that allows me to rewrite the log base two of this product as the log base two of eight plus the log base two of four to the three x minus four power. And now I'll apply my third log rule, take this exponent down in front of this log and this exponent down in front of this log. So I get the log base two of eight plus this three X minus four. Careful, make sure you include the parentheses. So both of these terms get multiplied by the log base two of four. And that's equal to, again, the parentheses are important, X plus one, this exponent times the log base two of eight. And now we get to see the benefit of choosing log base two in the first place. We could have done all of this work regardless of what base we chose on these logs, but since we have the log base two of eight, the log base two of four and the log base two of eight, those are all things we can evaluate. The log base two of eight is just equal to three because two to the third power equals eight. And the log base two of four is just equal to two because this two to this power two equals this four. And just like over on the left-hand side, this log base two of eight is equal to three. Oh, how nicely, all the logs canceled out. All I'm left with here is a linear equation. That's easy enough to solve. Uh, maybe I'll get rid of all my parentheses. So I'll take this two and distribute it in to get rid of these parentheses and get six X minus eight. And on this side, I'll take the three into the parentheses and get three X plus three. Now I can collect all my terms with X's in them on one side of the equation. So maybe subtract three X from both sides. So I'll be left with just three X over here, this six X minus this three X. And then I can add eight over here, that would give me 11, subtract three, I think that'll leave me with eight over on this side of the equation. Divide both sides by three and you get X equals eight thirds as your answer. Really quickly, a second way that you could solve this, which I think a lot of students wouldn't see, but maybe by demonstrating it for you, you'll be able to see it in the future, is this eight kind of causes trouble, right? It's annoying that I have this eight times this four to the three X minus four power, because that prevented me from using my third log rule once I took the log of stuff. I wish that eight weren't there, it would make the problem a lot easier. We can get rid of this eight, just divide both sides by eight. And you might be like, well, yeah, that'll work, that'll clean up the left-hand side, but that's just gonna make the right-hand side a mess, right? Eight to the X plus one power, will now be divided by eight. So I got rid of the eight over on this side, but I kind of created an eight over on this side. And that's true, but this side will simplify really nicely. If you think about this as eight to the one power, then what I have is a quotient of two exponents and they have the same base. And so my first exponent rule tells me that when you're in that situation, you can subtract the exponents in case it helps to refer back to these things. I'm using this rule. When I have the same base, I can subtract the two different exponents. So this exponent of x plus one minus this exponent of one, x plus one minus one is just x. I get eight to the x power on the right hand side. And now I have a much easier looking equation because I don't have these coefficients to deal with at all. 
yeah, I got kind of lucky that this eight happened to match up with this base that'll only work when the bases match up somewhere. But in this instance, it does, so I want to show you what you could do. Now you take a log of both sides of the equation, then you're done. Which log do you take? The point that I've tried to make is it really doesn't matter. You take any log you want. I don't think log base 10 makes nearly as much sense as log base two, or I don't know, log base four, or log base eight. But I just wanna illustrate that it doesn't matter which log you choose, because no matter what log you put in, you'll be able to use your third log rule. So bring this exponent three X minus four out in front of the log base 10 of four, and bring this exponent of X out in front of the log base 10 of eight. And now all I have to do is solve this equation for X. Ooh, but that's gonna be kinda of hard because there's an X over here and an X over here. But that's okay, we've solved the equations before when there's multiple X's floating around. The general idea is you wanna get all of the X terms together on one side of the equation and all the terms without an X together on the other side of the equation. However, it's hard to see what terms are here. Well, log of four is just some number and log of eight is just some number. So this is just X times some number, this thing's good. It's over here where I have the two different terms inside of the parentheses. We get rid of the parentheses by taking this number, whatever number this happens to be, and multiplying it through the parentheses. What I'm saying is the left-hand side we could rewrite as 3x times the log of four minus four times the log of four and leave the right side alone. The advantage to this is now you can see the terms. Here's a term with an x, here's a term without an x, here's a term with an x. So let's move all my terms with x's on them to the same side of the equation. The way I can do that is by subtracting x log of eight on both sides and adding four log of four on both sides to get here. And now that all of my terms have an x in them, I could factor out an x to change my equation from having two x's to just a single x. So if I factor out this x and this x, I'd be left with three log four minus log eight is equal to four log four. And it doesn't seem like you're close to done, but you're actually really close. You could just divide both sides by this mess to get the x all by itself and get that x is equal to four times the log of four divided by three times the log of four minus the log of eight. And you're like, wait, that's not the right answer. The right answer is eight thirds. Well, guess what? This is eight thirds. You're like, I don't see how that's eight thirds. Yeah, neither do I. It's an expression that involves logs, but it's perfectly acceptable. And I'd allow you to leave your answer like this. However, a time might come where I give you extra credit if you can rewrite this just as a number like eight thirds. So let me show you how you could write this as eight thirds. We're gonna end up using the change of base formula, but the change of base formula doesn't work until we have the log of something divided by the log of something else. So what I have to do is make this just the log of four. This four right here is causing trouble. Oh, no problem, that's easy to fix. I can just use my third log rule to bring it up into the exponent. Okay, but you have two different logs down here. Well, that's okay, I can combine those with my second log rule that allows me to rewrite the difference in two logs as the log of some quotient. Oh, but I can't do that until this three is gone. Again, no problem. Use your third log rule to bring that up into the exponent. Now what I can do is use my second log rule to combine those two logs down in the denominator into the log of whatever the quotient of this number and this number is. Four to the third power divided by eight. Maybe I should figure out what these numbers are. Four times four is 16, times four again is 64, times four again is 256. Four to the fourth power is 256, so I get the log of 256 up top. Down in the bottom, four cubed, four times four times four is 64. So I get 64 divided by eight. 64 divided by eight is just eight. What I can now do is my change of base formula. The change of base formula tells me that the log of 256 over the log of eight is the log base eight of 256. Okay, but what is the log base eight of 256? Well, the claim, is that it's eight thirds, but I don't think there's any way you'd be able to look at this and tell that it's eight thirds. Hmm, what can we do? Well, we have this logarithmic equation. Maybe we can rewrite this logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. Okay, eight to the X power equals 256. How does that help? Well, remember way back in 4.3, we solved these guys. The way we solved them is we equated the bases and that would allow us to equate the exponents. So what I need is a base that I can write eight in terms of and a base that I can write 256 in terms of. Well, two to the third power is equal to eight, and two to the eighth power is equal to 256. Those aren't facts I think that you should have memorized by any means, but maybe if you had a calculator and you were playing around with it for a little while, you could figure out how you could write this in terms of twos and this in terms of twos. Two to the third to the x, oh, exponent rule says that I can just rewrite that as two to the three x power is equal to two to the eight. 
And now since the bases are the same, I can equate the exponents. Another way of thinking about that is I could take the log base two of both sides of this equation. And since the base on the log and the base on the exponent are the same, this simplifies to just three X. And similarly, this simplifies to just eight. And I get X is equal to eight thirds. Whoa, I never would have thought to do that. It's okay, it's totally fine. You could have gotten eight thirds if you solved this by taking the log base two of both sides from the start. But the point was, even if you didn't take the log base two of both sides, if you took any other log, you could still solve the problem. And yeah, your answer might not be as pretty, but if you had the inclination to do so, you could show how this expression is equal to eight thirds. It's asking a lot and it's not something I need you to be able to do for this class, but this is how you'd be able to do it and get that same answer. All right, last equation. I think this one will go a little bit quicker. I don't think this will be too bad. The log base two of x plus the log base two of x minus two equals three. First, let me show you what you can't do. Don't try to cancel out these log base twos by being like, well, two to this is just x, and two to this is x minus two, and two to this is three. So this is x plus x minus two equals two cubed. I see that so frequently. This does not equal this. We cannot do two to each of these individual terms. All you can do is two to this entire side of the equation equals two to this side of the equation. But I don't think that'll help you because you have this sum. You don't wanna do that trick where we do two to the left side of the equation equals two to the right side of the equation until we only have a single log here. Well, how do I make this a single log? How about your first log rule? We have the log of something plus the log of something else. Our first log rule says we can rewrite that as the log base two of whatever x times x minus two is equal to. Now I can do that trick where I do two to both sides of the equation. And the advantage of choosing two as the base that I'm gonna raise both sides of the equation to is now I have the same base on the exponent as I have on the log. And that allows me to, informally speaking, cancel those out and leave me with just x times x minus two on the left-hand side of the equation. And on the right-hand side, I have two cubed and two cubed is equal to eight. So all I gotta do is solve this equation right here. You're like, how do I solve this equation? Well, this is a quadratic equation. Maybe you can get rid of the parentheses by making this x squared minus two x equals eight, and then set the equation equal to zero by subtracting eight from both sides so that you can try to factor it. To factor this, I'd need two numbers that when I add them gives me negative two, and when I multiply them gives me negative eight. I think negative four and positive two will do the trick. So this factors to this, and now I have something times something equals zero, which means either x minus four equals zero or x plus two equals zero. We solve these by adding four to both sides and get x equals four, or subtract two from both sides and get x equals negative two. And those are your answers, or so it appears. Turns out those are not your answers. It turns out only one of these two is your answer. Four is an answer, negative two is not. And you're like, what, why? Well, a weird thing happens whenever you get these quadratics and you're dealing with logs. You wanna check your answers. Go back to the start and try plugging in a four here. The log base two of four plus the log base two of whatever four minus two is equal to should be equal to three. Does that work? The log base two of four, well, that's just equal to two because two squared equals four. Okay, four minus two is just two. The log base two of two is one. Two plus one, that equals three. That looks like that all works out. But what if I tried to check x equals negative two? Well, then I would ask myself, what's the log base two of negative two? What is the log base two of negative two? You're like, um, I don't know, negative one. No, the log base two of one half is negative one because two to the negative one power equals one half. The log base two of negative two, it's not even defined. You're not allowed to take the log of a negative number. Why? Well, because look what happens if I change this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. I get two to the x power equals negative two. What do you raise a two up to to make it negative? There's nothing you can raise it up to. Any power is gonna leave you with something that's positive. If you look at the graph of the log base two of x, it looks more or less like this. You cannot put negative two into this equation. There's no height defined for it. The log base two of negative two is undefined. So negative two can't possibly be a solution because if I tried to plug it up here into the original equation, I get something that's undefined right here. This would also be undefined, but the point is just it would not satisfy the original equation. So the purpose of this example was twofold. I wanted to show you that if you have multiple logs like this, often it helps to combine them into a single log so that you can use our tricks to get rid of that log. But I also wanted to show you that when you combine your logs, if you end up with something that's quadratic in nature and you get multiple solutions, you have to check your solutions because often you'll have one extraneous solution, you only get one real solution. 
And I think that ends log equations, which for most people is the hardest thing you do with logs, which for most people is the hardest thing you do in this entire class. So you might be a little bit overwhelmed, but try to keep your head up. I know this stuff is really hard. We'll get a nice little breather coming up with some much easier material.